YouTube, I put off making a video of this manor for quite some time because I wasn't really interested in the Benghazi so-called scandal. I don't consider that a scandal so much as <laughs> uh, an ineptitude on the part of the government. The IRS scandal was interesting, but I needed some more substance to delve into to actually justify a video on the topic. Of course, the latest scandal breaking right now, and it is a scandal, and I can t predict what will happen, unfortunately, um, is that the Obama administration is seizing, indiscriminately seizing, it's not like targeting you know, people who are calling known terrorists or who are making frequent calls to Saudi Arabia, uh, just uh, generically collecting all phone data that happens to pass through Verizon's hands, which of course is millions and millions of people. And it's troublesome and it's worrying. And what's more worrying, I think, than the actual, and it's blatantly unconstitutional, it says Feinstein came out and said, well, it's... Uh, allotted under the provisions of the Patriot Act. Well, the Patriot Act, you can argue all day over whether that was constitutional to begin with either. And it's certainly a bad idea, and it should have been discontinued years ago. The fact that Obama didn't discontinue it, I think, was more his, uh, his assistance fault than his directly. I think he went in there and, and did want to close Guantanamo and scale down the so-called war on terror, and then he realized that the president doesn't have nearly as much power as people think that they do, and that the advisors handle most of situations. But it's worrying here primarily because when you look at stories on the topic, you see people going back and forth about who's responsible for removing more privacy from people. You have Republicans saying, there, that damn Obama, he's taken her freedoms. And then you have the Democrats saying, well, Bush did the same thing, and, and he was worse, so nothing's getting accomplished. People are locked into this stupid left-right Democrat-Republican system that they don't understand that both of them are responsible, that they largely work together on these things, and that they both in spirit agree with the idea that, yes, people should have less privacy. And we've seen it. George W. Bush, Patriot Act, uh, all sorts of uh, start the war on terror, hire all of these agents, start looking after people like Big Brother State, and Obama's continued it. They agree in spirit on this issue that the government has the responsibility to essentially, if you've ever seen 1984, and uh, surprisingly few people seem to remember that movie or any of that content, if, if you look at the way things are going now, and have been since Bush Jr., actually you could argue they've been happening that way since JFK got assassinated, and you can go into conspiracy theories all day about that, but certainly in recent years we've slowly lost most of our privacy. The internet was sort of like the Wild West in the 1990s, and I can remember that was in the late 90s is when I started using the internet for the first time. It was very very lawless, and kids today don't seem to understand that, that a lot of the social media that they have now didn't exist back then. But I've never claimed to be a supporter of big government. I don't like the idea of big government. In as far as it helps people, purely it can be useful, but generally speaking, once you get that help for people, then it becomes overreach, and then you have the problem of statism. And this is why I liked Ron Paul. I looked at him and I said, even if his ideas I don't routinely agree with, even if some of his ideas are nutty, at least he comes off as the sort of person who's unlikely to attempt to expand the government because one of his platforms was let's shrink it. I didn't like him because he was a Republican. I liked him because he was a libertarian in Republican clothing. But if you look at the IRS scandal, and you look at the things that have been done there, they were blatant, it was blatantly unlawful, blatantly. Uh, there's no question in anyone's mind that it was unlawful. I don't understand why the left, which poured hate out on George Bush Jr. for doing similar things, isn't up in arms. Can they not understand that this is just perpetuating the same failed statist policies that fucked them in the ass in the first place. The Democrats were up in arms when Bush was president 
over him doing things that are essentially identical to what Obama's doing now. And I don't understand why the Republicans weren't up in arms under Bush and are now under Obama. Both sides <clears throat> are being played the fool by the mass media, which is government friendly, and anyone who claims that it's got a left or right lean doesn't know what they're talking about because there's extensions of the same model. Essentially, the left and the right disagree greatly on a lot of issues. They disagree on how to handle the economy. That's the truth. They disagree on things like gay marriage and environmentalism and where we should put this factory and things of that nature, civil rights and so forth. They disagree on these issues, but they agree completely, as votes show in Congress and as the last two presidents show, they both agree with a big brother state in which people are less free in the name of security. That's a bad idea. Generally speaking, if you're giving up that liberty, that liberty you're getting rid of what you're fighting to protect. The fact that we're free is kind of the reason we have the pride to attempt to protect ourselves. If the country wasn't free, and people were constantly going around with drones buzzing overhead, and cameras on every street corner, and armed guards telling them what to do, what the hell would there be to protect? Nobody would be... Anyone who was a patriot under such a system would have to be completely indoctrinated. And people say, well, the libertarians are nutty. The libertarians have been warning you about these things for quite some time. And it's not just the libertarians. There are some people who consider themselves liberal and conservative as well who have pointed this out before, that the two-party system has completely and utterly failed. Both parties agree that we need to remove people's privacy. They have different ways of doing it in some cases where they focus on different aspects of it, but they've both voted for these bills. For instance, Pat Leahy, one of the senators from my home state of Vermont, the author of SOPA, and this guy, even his own party ended up not voting for it because it was so, it was so out there, it was such a huge infringement of privacy and of the Constitution that even his own party eventually was persuaded not to vote for it by the mass action of 16 million uh, people who signed petitions. And this is what needs to be done in order to undo all of this, because the IRS scandal was the first... Well, Benghazi was first. Benghazi shows ineptitude. Benghazi shows that the CIA had a hand in it. Uh, but that wasn't really a scandal, so to speak. Then you had the IRS scandal, which was troubling, because if... And the left needs to understand this, and I don't know how many t people have to say this before they do. If a democratic president is having his little people do this to a bunch of conservative groups to target them for essentially unfair taxation, unfair tax processes, then what happens if a Republican gets elected? Well, the precedent's already there. What, ha what would have happened if Romney had been elected? And he had started going and doing, doing the same thing with pro-gay groups or Planned Parenthood or something like that. The left would be completely up in arms. This is unfair. Well, yes, it would be unfair. It's just as unfair to do this to conservative groups. I'm not a conservative. I don't give a shit about the Tea Party. The Tea Party is shit to me. But they still should be treated fairly. People have the right to form whatever sort of political or apolitical organizations they want, and they should be free from that sort of intrusion. It doesn't matter what they believe. I don't care if it's some violent Baptist group that thinks that beheading gays is a good idea. They're still, they still have that right. That's the way the United States ought to work. People are supposed to be able to talk about things and debate things and disagree with one another without fucking one, and over, one another over at the government level. People are supposed to be free enough to do that and should be left to work out their own conclusions as to what they believe in. It shouldn't require the government to come in and play Big Brother. So the IRS scandal was a problem. Now we've got this problem where the government is looking through everyone's phone records and emails and all other correspondence indiscriminately. It's just collecting them all. Why do you think they built that uh, center in, in Utah that has, you know, enough server power to process all the data from a country 
the size of France or some insane number like that that's just processing all of this data. What do you think they're doing with it? And the thing is, the government didn't want us to know about this. This was a leak, and it took the British to do it. Now, the British are themselves a highly censored police state society. There are cameras on every street corner in the cities in Britain. Their government is extraordinarily politically correct and falling apart at the seams. And even they were honest enough to report this. None of the mainstream media in the United States reported this. It took the British and the Guardian to do it. That's how bad it has become, that we now have to... I literally read foreign news sources more than I read domestic news sources. Because at least the foreign sources are semi-protected from American law and can leak these stories of great importance to me without getting fucked in the ass. I can't trust CNN or Fox to do that, or MSNBC. They're completely under the thumb of the government, and they're completely locked into the two-party system as well. And I've got a kitty here, so you get to see the kitten. Yes, you can go play. But it's just ridiculous. How much more has to be done here before people wake up? Yes, kitty, how much more? Are they stupid? You used to completely retarded. I mean, the mainstream media is under the thumb of the government. The government's under the thumb of, of the elitists, essentially. How much more has to be done before people wake up and understand they're living in a police state right now? You've got the possibility of drones flying overhead. You've got surveillance everywhere. Uh, it's, it's too much. It's happening so quickly. It, should, it used to be the worry was over time you'd have creeping fascism that over time you would see a little bit here and a little bit there and slowly lose your freedom. Lately, it seems to be going whole hog. It's no longer a slow process. We're now marching lockstep over the cliff towards tyranny, and it has nothing to do with Obama or Bush or the Democrats or the Republicans or Marxism, socialism, whatever political group, they're all in it together. Because the way our campaign finance works right now, they're both backed by the same companies playing both sides against the other because they know they can't lose. <coughs> so there's the problem. So I think that people should be up in arms about them. They should be marching in the street. They should be saying, hell no, we won't accept this. We're going to vote everyone out unless they vote against it. Essentially hold a referendum and say, get rid of the Patriot Act. Get rid of the domestic drone program. Stop this shit with the IRS. Get rid of, of any idea of going through phone records unless it's been warranted by a judge. This is what we need to do. It has nothing to do with party. People need to get over this stupid notion that you can trust somebody just because they have a D or an R after their name. It makes absolutely no sense. If you just sat back and you thought about it for a few minutes, you'd start to laugh at how ridiculous it sounds. You sound like an idiot when you think that way. People don't seem to understand that, and it's rather sad.